Show that to my son, man. Hey, oh, man, yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta see what this toy you got. How you doing? How you doing? Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Oh. This is this is my Osmo Pocket. Uh, oh, no. This thing is like one inch, literally, but it's yeah. 4K60. Wow. So, I know, I'm like, I'm looking like... <laughs> oh, you're so cool. It is, yeah. It's a, it's a gimbal and everything. Yeah, the man right here. <laughs> this is, look how cool this is. This little ass cake. Look, look at oh, this. Wow. And it's 4K. It's beautiful. Oh my god, I yeah. love one. I'm excited for this. Yeah, I've already I, been. I, 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 I could, when, I, when I was in the class, I could mm. tell you were one of those ones that was really, really oh. just soaking it in. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Every chance I get, every chance I get. We were Make here. Sure you give me your email. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, most definitely. Americans on one side, Native Americans on the other, and we're all basically indigenous people, right? right. And so at a certain point, I, and there's not, there's no black folks in Montana, there's three, and I use them all. Uh. <laughs> but they have a lot of Native Americans, and a lot of white folks, and a lot of horses, and a lot of mountains. So we are there, and so I, I looked at us, my Native American brothers and sisters starting to get cold, so some of the PAs, which are mostly white kids, brought them blankets. And this girl was covered, and she said, I don't know, last time we took these blankets, <laughs> it didn't work out so well. <laughs> and we started laughing, but it was really, it was interesting. All the different bonding and different levels of communication. And I, I like as a writer to write things as multiple layers. So it's one of those movies that you kind of need to see a couple times and you'll catch little things each time that you didn't see. It was a blessing to just be in another, you know, situation with you, and he allowed me to be a co-producer. 
So this yeah. will be my debut producing movie in the theaters coming from Atlanta Woodside. You hear what I'm saying? So <laughs> talk to me now, you bitch. A quick intimate q and A. I want to call down my new friend, Professor Dunn. She is an amazing professor at Morehouse College. Raise your hand if you came from Morehouse today. Okay. We went there earlier, had a wonderful conversation. A lot of bright young men, black men, may I add, that are going to do amazing things in the entertainment industry. So, Professor Dunn, she's a writer, professor of film and English, chair of Morehouse Cinema. Television and Emerging Media Studies, CTEMS program. And I want to call you down and Mario down to the stool. Oh, okay. And just have a, a more thoughtful conversation. So everyone, please give Professor Dunn a warm welcome. So can you talk a little bit about how special or what you even learned yourself in making a film with your son, having been a son of a filmmaker, learning on set with your own father. Let me start with him. Mandela, you start. Hey, hey, hey. How you guys doing? Good. Thanks for coming outside. I hope you guys enjoyed the film. Uh, great question, by the way. I always learn a lot working with this guy. I will say, after 29 years, I felt that I had a little bit of practice being a son. <laughs> and I was trying to the role. Uh, but, but more seriously, I think we have a relationship with him where we have different languages. We have a father son dynamic, we have actor actor, we have actor writer with home dynamic. And for this one, it was a real pleasure getting to try on a different hat. And it was a cowboy hat. But uh, yeah, we had to shoot some guns, ride some horses. But most importantly, I find working with him really uh, enjoyable because I know the notes, the directions, everything is coming from a place of love. And it's not every day you have a director on your side who wants you to win. So that's always helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I grew up doing it too, you know. So it's kind of comes natural. It's part of our family language, our love language. Now, just because you love someone doesn't mean they're good at what they think they love to do. <laughs> so let me clarify that. You know, my mom loves that, loved that. But she couldn't act the shit about it. It doesn't mean I don't love her. It just means I don't want to stop me. You know what I mean? So we gotta, you got to keep that real. You're not doing anybody any favor. So Mandela, whether we fight or not, I know the brother got some skills in that. But he's also, right? He's also a good writer. You know, he can ride a horse. And that's the other thing is that and when you're doing any film, <coughs> it's not some CGI or AI, it's real guy. So a lot of things have to work because they were in one shot. And I wanted it to feel real. Did it feel real? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you can tell like people knew what they were doing. DC knows how to ride. But in the van, people said we well, had a pretty strong paternal line. And I got to be posse with my dad. I didn't have kids. And I got to do outlaw posse with my son yeah. and have my dad in. So I thought it was kind of cool to be the connective tissue, you know, mm. cinematic connective tissue for a real on screen father, son, grandson. And I looked up the other day and I was like, damn, my dad gave me my first line to ever in a movie. And I gave him his last line to ever in a movie. Wow. wow, that's kind of daddy, sir. Is that the Asian guy that's in the movie that plays the guy that wanted to open a restaurant? He is the great, great, great grandson of the guy that opened the restaurant. Yeah. So when you look at the real Wild Wild West, we were all there. Mm. And part of what I wanted to show my son is that good allies come in all colors. If the world all looks like you and looks like you, they have more than us. But make something with love, make that gumbo with love, build it, and they will come. That's my hope. We'll see Friday. Like my shirt says, right? Check out my shirt. What did Daddy say? Earthy man, early in your eyes, work like hell in appetite. So check out my t shirt, right? So the first one says, slavery was legal. Not allowing women to vote was legal. Jim Crow was legal. When the laws are just, the just are laws. That's what we have to name. Right, so sometimes I tell my son that same 
thing, we're not just going to say the goal against the goal. We've got to correct some of these laws on the way. And so we started to understand that a little different. And what I wanted to do was, like, in my family, we clown everybody. We laugh. So I wanted to create a movie where we could laugh and stuff. Like, when was the last time you saw a movie where a white guy and a black guy rob a bank together and he was starting out? You don't see that every day. <laughs> Ever. That was what. Ever, right? Ever. Ever. Who's talking to his cousin, by the way? If you look at it real close, Ooh. you see a little bit of time. Who's the cousin? Yeah. So he's talking to his cousin. He read his shirt and he's like, So, I love Beethoven, but I've lost one arm, so I can never play the violin again. So I'm kind of like on some Captain Hook mission. But I'm also environmentally aware. This shit is me. <laughs> <laughs> so I always have a little fun with it, you know, mix it up. So that part of it is uh, this great saying, uh, the more things change, French, the more things stay the same. So there's a lot of our history that is happening right now that was happening back then. But here's the trick. When my first lesson I made 30 years ago, I really didn't know who the outlaw posse that at the exact time we dropped in the movie, Sister Bianca and Lucas Bianca Much so that we're putting it on our own social media, seeing the cute picture. Everybody gonna do it, right? Yes. You're sure you're positive. I think that Jewish folks and black folks have really strong communities. And I think part of it is because we have recent trauma. And part of, you know, we centurion two political people are 110 to have some things in common. First is point of view, sense of humor. Second is exercise. And third is often is support. But I felt like with, with this character, she, you know, he's, he's got me down by that a little bit. He's got, he's got to get the joke of life, you know what I mean? So I thought, what is a cowboy? Cowboy is a gun and a horse and a certain thing. So I deliberately have it where she's horse gets stolen. He got to get a ride. He got to stow his guns. Second Amendment issues in a, in a chest, you know what I mean? Then I wanted to put him in tough situations where he would have to laugh at himself. I always just have a sense of someone who's lived longer. The, 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 the man at 50 is the same as he was as the man at 20. Hasn't grown much. Now, what you might notice also in the movie is that I wrote a book. I think my filmmakers I was talking to you earlier, I was talking to you right earlier. Yes, sir. Uh, I wrote the movie with three acts. So the first act, the camera's sort of like Sergio Leone. The camera doesn't move a lot. It's sort of static. Wind is blowing. You don't know who's who, right? The second act with the bank robbery, the camera starts to pick up. Then the third act, when we get hot and the peyote and everything, the camera starts to go, oh. <laughs> And so it's almost like you're inside the sphere of what we're going through. And so what happens with the viewer is it's it starts to pick up. And that's what I was talking about. 
mm -hmm. the importance of rhythm and sound. Yes, sir. You just break it down in a simple way. Most people, me, yes, when when he says, "Do you remember, you remember your song?" I go, "Yeah." They hung up trying to teach you to read, and then they told me to call an old white priest's father. <laughs> they told me that by law I had to take the slave owner. I called the slave owner master, and then I had to take the slave master's last name. When you listen to that, that sounds crazy. <laughs> and he says, I knew it all. That bullshit. I was going to be an outlaw for sure. <laughs> so you kind of get it. It's like anyone, if that were a white, a black John Wayne, you'd be like, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I, if you make break it down, as Malcolm X said, make it plain. Mm. And you can figure out a way to frame things in a way that all human beings would understand. So it's not just an understanding that falls along racial lines, but just along it makes sense lines. Mm. That is the key. Logic. And then just keep it simple and organic. If it's not, you strip it out. In terms of the layers of the strip, um, this gets crazy. Because I have multiple voices. And usually around 3, 3 a.m., don't come to me. The first one usually is the one that thinks everything I do is shit. And the other one goes, man, that ain't nothing. How you going? That's the doubting part. Do you know what I mean? And I have about five of these people, and they'll run around and say stuff, and I argue with them, and then in the morning, I'll pull it out and read it, and then I'll go on a process. And some of, it, some of it's good, it'll stick. But just, just like life, like if I can work out, because my ass Lord Mario gets me up to work out before my lazy Mario can say, well, maybe I need to stretch it up. I probably should get a phone call. It really is cold out. That you know, I'll be at home all day. <laughs> so I, have, I, I, I acknowledge that I have these different selves, right? And as a writer, I just let them out. And if one guy's wrong, I don't feel personally responsible for it. And the minute that you take yourself and say, well, I'm not personally responsible for what the fuck? They just come from ether. <laughs> then you're no longer so worried about, did I have it up? Because it, it's just something, and then great ideas come through you, and you see it, and so I kind of let, I think the, the older I get, and the way the younger I get, it's kind of like having kids in a way that kids come through you. I didn't know the single would be a lad. Do you know what I mean? It just kind of goes that way. I mean, you know, you find things, and the same thing about yourself, so when you start to be your own best parent, Do that and, and bring it out. So I just, I'm just free to be silly. You stay younger, longer. Yes. You don't have to be so damn serious. Yes. Being black is a damn chore. Yeah. You can yeah. laugh and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're free to be silly. It's like, it, you know, and I try to stay young enough to be a great student and old enough to be a badass teacher. And how long did it take to write the script? Was your actual. I'm putting it on paper, here's a draft, here's another draft. Okay, well, after the Marcos would argue, I would get it together and then I would sort of write it out in acts. And it didn't take that long. Once I started to really put it out in acts and I'd sit aside for a while and laugh and shit, come back to it, see if I still like it. So it's kind of a process, like tasting the soup, like, oh, some garlic, oh, some onions, you know, and, it's, and see, and there's some scripts I write and go, eh, I don't know. So, it, it probably took a couple of months. And I went, oh, that's what that's really working. And I love the character Queenie, that Queenie had the ability, this sister has the ability to see the future. When she tells Chief in the car, she's like, uh uh, Carson, he's supposed to look out for me, and you will marry me. Do you know what I mean? She's right, and I'm like, I got underwear your age. Mr. Gary in the back. What do you say, sir? Comic overtones in this. Have you ever just thought about doing a comedy, a whole movie, cop, all cop? And my name is Gary. Hi, Gary. <laughs> um, you know, I I have, I love comedy. I've done characters. I've done, you know, comedic characters. But I also enjoy being able to laugh at tragedy too. And you know, that's the thing about a movie like this. There is action in life. There is laughter in life, especially for us. Um, and I like the mix of it. So I think I'm in a zone where I'm comfortable, but I, I would be happy to do a comedy. The minute, Gary, that you get the funding together, I want you to call. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm down. Um, 
So I'm always up for a new challenge, but my first role, in, you know, I broke in in comedy because it's something that the the, uh, the character uh, DC says is that, you know, if if the court gesture can make the king laugh, he can say anything. Mm -hmm. So through comedy, you can say stuff that folks don't want to hear with a straight face. Last, we are down to the last two questions, y'all. One, none. Y'all, this is the boss. What well, say you, boss? Right, we, we didn't win a little over, but um, um, I'll let one more, one more, and then y'all, y'all look, y'all tag Mario. He'll answer any question on social media. <laughs> now, remember when you have a guest like this who has been, well, he's even been Malcolm X and Ali, and he has directed the classic like New Jack City and Posse and all these things, not to mention all the television that he has directed in his career, you really could talk to him all night long. Well, that's good. And the last, we can't do it, girl. We just can't do it. Now, the boss has spoken. Um, so I want to say to you, hashtag Outlaw Posse. Yeah. Get on the social media below. Blow these two up. And tell everybody how much you love the film. Please go drag somebody to see it on Friday and Saturday. It's not again. Go this weekend. Yes, yes. Yeah. Go this weekend to show our might. Will you please? So thank you so much, um, Erica. Thank you so much, Mario Van Diebel and Mandela. And if you see he left us, maybe. But we love you. We thank you so much, Erica. Anything else I no. need to say? Y'all better not leave. We locking the door unless y'all tell somebody to go see it this weekend. <laughs> now, is, something, is there something out there on the table that I spy something? I thought okay, that there, there are. Get it while it's hot. We got a, some a few more t-shirts on the table. We got some t-shirts on the table. Yeah. So that t-shirt on the table, you're getting gifts. Don't forget that. Go get mine, sir. Got it. Yes, we have. Bye, 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 bye. 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 Bye,
Ramadan's coming up soon. We got a rugby tournament in two weeks in Alabama this time. Shoot, yeah. Yeah, back at the Regal again. Back at the Regal again. This was incredible. This was incredible. It was different than the first time because we didn't just see the movie. We had to actually speak with the cast, bro. That junk is crazy. On top of that, they want to do stuff with me, bro. So I'm excited. Such a blessing meeting all of them. They're all so kind, bro. They're all so kind and genuine people. Especially, especially Mr. Van Peebles himself. But yeah, man, that's about it. Um, Like, subscribe. Do whatever you gotta do. You know, drink some water, maybe. You, you unhydrated swine. I'm gonna catch you. Peace.